So as we wrap up the, the three-month sequence, uh, we've seen that this whole process that we've worked with um, has been good old HTML and such, which a lot of us had experience with, and some of us didn't, and we've come pretty far. But the big thing about it has been using this, this command prompt, you know, taco create or taco build and all of that. This has been the way we've been doing it. And as I've been teaching this for several years, this to me has been one of the, the best ways so far, the way I'm teaching it. But I've also seen a lot of, um, a lot of other uh, upstarts and such trying to do this perhaps more user-friendly or, or just in a different way. Uh, so briefly, I want to, to mention uh, a couple of other possible ways to do this, because that would be a big discussion to, had, to have. But I just want to mention these other ways that we could possibly do this cross-platform development, because um, this way works, and we, we, your app is there live, and, and there's various apps that I've worked on and such. This way works. But uh, again, depending on how much you really want to put the time and effort into, this may be way too <coughs> much. So one other way to, uh, to do this, let me just confirm my address here. If you go to, yes, if you go to visualstudio.com, yes, this is the big famous Visual Studio that's been around for Microsoft for, I don't know, 20 years now. And so Microsoft... Uh, saw the writing on the wall, saw the shift in um, to more, more mobile development rather than you know PCs and laptops and such, and really buckled down, especially after the new CEO, uh, Nadella, came in and really shifted things to be more inclusive of open source and to be more inclusive of Linux and to be more cross-platform. So what I've been seeing, and again, there's only so many hours in the day to learn all this stuff and Hopefully another spring break comes by so that I can sit down and learn some more or go to the beach. Um, I'd like to learn this a bit more too, and I have some experience in it, and I've been using it, and I've been impressed with it. Visual Studio um, is, uh, is another, another way to do this cross-platform <coughs> development. Uh, recently, very recently, Microsoft bought Xamarin, uh, which is this other... Um, framework that existed. PhoneGap, Titanium, Accelerator, etc. Xamarin was one of them too. And they were doing very well. Uh, Microsoft started to invest in them. And then eventually said, oh, we'll just buy them. So they paid a hundred and whatever millions of dollars and bought the Xamarin tool set and integrated it into Visual Studio. So this is another way to do these cross-platform devices with HTML and all of that that we've been doing. The big draw with all of this is that now this is another package all together in a, in a more visual environment with actual buttons to click. There's your, there's your run button right there. Instead of typing taco run Android, you click that button right there and it runs it. You, you can kind of see it here. It, it says iPhone right there. Run that app in the iPhone or run it on your Android device. So you get this integrated development environment, an IDE, a full-featured one-stop shop for everything. You don't need the Notepad++, you don't need the command prompt, you, know, you don't need these separate pieces of software. It's all in this. It's all in Visual Studio. Um, and what's really shocking at the moment is that the ver one of the versions of Visual Studio, Community Edition, is free. Totally free for all of this. Because, of course, the enterprise version is like $2,000 per license. Um, so you don't want that one, of course. You don't want the studio team and the enterprise one and all that. You want the community edition. Uh, if you go this way, if you do explore this, you will see that with Visual Studio Community Edition, you can create apps for Windows, Android, iOS, the modern way with web technologies. Um, this is a big, uh, this is a way to do it, but it is a big footprint. Uh, last I checked it, it's over 20 gigabytes of stuff to download. It's one file that you download, but it's full of a bunch of subfiles. And behind the scenes, it's kind of doing what Taco did a while ago when we did Taco <coughs> install 
Rex Android, remember that from a while ago? Um, Visual Studio has that behind the scenes when you, when you go through a nice pretty installation screen. It's going to say, what kind of apps would you like to develop? And you just check them on. Well, I want to develop Android apps, I want to develop iPhone apps. You're just checking all that on. And then behind the scenes, it's going to download 20 gigabytes of, of files and frameworks and all of that. And then you'll get, in your start menu, a nice, you know, app. We don't have it here, uh, but, you know, we'll get Visual Studio as a, as a real app uh, rather than being at the command prompt. And we saw the command prompt wasn't that complicated. We, know, we had to know a few commands, but using something like this, completely integrated, uh, with debugging, and then there's all these videos and all of that. I click download, and it's going to start that process. But um, if I go look at features, or compare. So you can go off here and just see, well, what's each version about? Free, with caveat, $45 professional. Enterprise, $250 a month, um, what's included in, in all of that. The cool thing is if you go for these paid versions, you also, you also get an access to uh, Microsoft Azure, or Azure, or however you want to say it. Does anyone know what that is, Microsoft Azure? Cloud. Cloud. Cloud system, cloud services, for you to be able to have that server that we're talking about, putting your apps online, <coughs> synchronizing them, doing complex social networking stuff. That's one of many cloud platforms out there, and Microsoft seems to be, you know, they, they see people want apps, they, people want online environments and such, so they're bundling all of this together really well. Um, so I wanted to bring this to your attention. This could be another possible way to, uh, to develop apps, cross-platform apps. It's obviously a different paradigm than we've learned in these three months. So you kind of would be starting over to some degree to learn this, but behind the scenes, all the way down to the core, this still uses a version of, of Cordova, also known as Taco, also known as PhoneGap. So we will be able to apply these concepts of plugins, the plugin for the camera, the plugin for social sharing, just in a nice pretty interface. Yes? Would this also take care of the uh, <coughs> uh Yes, they are... They are um, in, to my knowledge, in, in Visual Studio, they were favoriting, they are favoring, um, which one is it? Not Codeca. They're favor, favoring, um, what's that? Ionic. I think Ionic. I think they're favoring Ionic framework instead of jQuery Mobile. You know, all of these, again, are different ways to do the same thing. jQuery Mobile, Codeca, Sencha, and so forth. It would be Codeca if you use Visual Studio. You could integrate them both. You could, but here it's going to guide you, and the tutorials and such often are sort of like um, guiding you with Ionic. So various ways to do the same thing. You see a lot of tutorials and such also using Angular, AngularJS. So just many ways to do the same thing. Everyone's got the right answer, and everyone's got the wrong answer. It just depends which one am I going to spend the time to, to learn. So the last thing I'll say is if you go over to YouTube.com, Let me specify youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. So we've got a short video here. This is my company. If you recall, PMD Interactive is the part of the company that I'm a, that I'm a part of. We've got a channel here, youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. We've got a video. If you look at the videos, <coughs> Screen. We've got uh, build an Android app with Visual Studio in five minutes. Now, that is clickbait, and this is the setup and such, and the concepts in five minutes. But to fully build what we did here, that still takes a while. Um, but it seems to have been a hit because this video's got over 32,000 views. And uh, if you look at the video, you will see that BSN. people are asking wanted... questions and we're answering it. And people, people are saying, thanks, this really helped me. I'm doing a mobile tourist app. This is really working. Thanks for the video. And you know, people asking questions and we answer them. So 
um, this is another possibility. To this, leverage my experience. Isn't um, Visual Studio is one way, and there's, there's other ones uh, to do this cross-platform stuff now. But this is a, to set yourself up to possibly use this. Now, I'm not getting any sort of kickback or any sort of affiliate marketing out of this. I just want to bring it to your attention that it, it is a useful, another useful way to build apps um, because uh, it is within our reach. Uh, it's, it's been very complicated in the past and now it's a little less complicated, but still making apps is a big endeavor. Do you envision uh, updating your class to use uh, something like that in the future potentially as opposed to our current Technology. Potentially, yeah. You know, as I keep looking at this and testing it every chance that I get, I learn a little bit more and see how can we apply this uh, in the classes. I keep leaning maybe, maybe this might be a way. The downside here, obviously, is you know, 20 gigabyte download. Um, whereas with all the Cordova stuff, it might have been like three gigabytes, two gigabytes, something like that. So maybe it's worth it. Yes. But remember, the thing about Taco is it's just a variation of phone gap. Yeah. Cordova, phone gap, Taco. They're all variations of each other, so if the ad doesn't exactly say Taco, but it's mentioning phone gap, this is this. It's yeah, the same thing. It's rather new, actually. Yeah, Taco itself, I saw it start to emerge toward the end of last year, like October and such. And as I researched it, I said, this is going to really be much better than what I was teaching, so I went into it. Now there's this one. It's like, okay, maybe this one will be better to teach next time, too. So as I learn more about it and try to develop curriculum about it, maybe this will take over eventually. Question? Yes, is this a drag-and-drop environment? I used to do Visual Basic a long time ago. Is this I was impressed with you could take each component, drag it where you want, and then you could, uh, each one was an object that you could define its properties. Yeah, that's the classic Visual Basic uh, paradigm. As I've used it myself in the tutorials that I've also seen, it's usually still focused on the actual code. Um, perhaps they will add that, or perhaps I didn't quite find that, but it's still based on all of this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that we're familiar with. Not, not you can do C sharp. Um, when I built, when I did this video, they hadn't acquired Xamarin yet, um, and I, I want to check out the latest version of it for that answer. But even at this version here, back over here on this installation screen, right here you can choose what you want to use. And there is a spot in here for you to choose C Sharp. So cross-platform mobile development in C Sharp. And I believe that is Xamarin. Um, but this is what I'm saying about Visual Studio. Microsoft, they're really seeing, okay, we need to get into this now. <coughs> Yet another quarter has shown a decrease in sales of PCs. So even more on the stake on stakes for a big company like Microsoft to, to go mobile. So I am seeing that they're really trying with the Visual Studio, okay, build apps with HTML, build apps with C Sharp, build apps with Visual C++, all the way here. Now you get a 50 gigabyte download, but and then a way to reach everyone. Yes? I'm not looking for a definitive answer, but how long do you think this uh, Cordova Taco environment is going to be around to use as a word here? I think a while because I am seeing, um, I believe I, s I mentioned the website taco.tools a while ago. Taco.tools, this, this is where we look up taco. Uh, and they've got this blog and they're updating and they're doing like weekly or monthly, uh, they're doing monthly video chats and such about the state of it all and asking them questions. And I've been on it a few times and you know they seem to be open. And then look at this, if you look in the bottom right corner, Microsoft. So we've been using a variation of, of this from Microsoft, and they've got deep pockets, and they want this to succeed. So 
I, taco is just a skin on top of good old Cordova, and Cordova is a huge project that everyone's backing. So this is just Microsoft's flavor of Cordova. I think they're going to be around a while. Even if they go away, we just have to relearn the commands. I can't type taco build anymore. I'm going to type Cordova build. It's the same thing. It's just that this is the wrapper to try to make it a little more cross-platform. The fundamental approach that we've learned is going to be around for a long time, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Just the syntax and the... Yeah, that's, why, that's what I, how I tried to develop my class, just how universal can I make this that'll last, because platforms come and go, frameworks come and go, and obviously we want to know as much as possible and learn and have it valuable as long as possible. So I feel, and from what I see in the industry, this stuff is going to stick around. Uh, so uh, that's it for the moment. Any general questions? Maybe something to start thinking about. When we come back next time on the last day, we're going to start to touch upon... Um, we've got this project where it works right on an Android device, and I kept saying, well, we've got this core code that can go cross-platform. Let's talk about some cross-platform stuff next time. So um, see you next time, and we'll talk about that on the last day of the class.